I bought a $52 Japanese Odachi Katana from Wish. What could go wrong? Hey guys, Jerry Berg, the Poor Historian here, and I have been in a very Asiatic swordsman mood lately. The reason being the Swordsmanship Museum and Academy is going to have a traveling uh, Asian martial arts, Asian swordsmanship exhibit at an upcoming festival. So I've been really diving right in. I'll actually be teaching a couple historical Japanese swordsmanship classes. Uh, so it's really all been going up here uh, in, uh, in the, the Eastern world rather than the Western world lately. Uh, so I've been buying all sorts of cool artifacts. I've got a whole bunch of Japanese swordsmanship books, and I thought I'd take a break from buying and acquiring high-quality uh, Asian swordsmanship material and get to go on a little limb here, especially jumping onto the Wish videos that I've been posting on the channel here. I happen to be bored, and I searched through Wish.com or Wish app or whatever you want to call it, and I found that they were selling a Japanese Odachi katana uh total the cost that they had it listed for was 82 dollars plus 12 dollars shipping which was technically cheaper than anywhere else i could find uh online um and i did a bit of research based on the photo that they had there and it looked to be the bud k which is an infamous sword company for low quality wall hangers uh the bud k uh odachi which they sold, which is good. I made sure that it wasn't the Final Fantasy VII uh, Masamune Odachi. It was a generic Odachi. Uh, and so I was like, oh, okay, I guess. But you know, you know, Wish actually has a discount code, and I never get the 50% off discount code. You can actually put an item in your cart, put the discount code in to see what percent off you get, and if it's not what you want, just cancel it. You know, it's easy enough. Uh, so I did this time on a whim, and I put the sword in my cart, and I put the discount code in, and voila, I got 50% off, which leads to the total cost of this sword being $52, including shipping. This is like a six-foot sword. I think it was 69 inches. Nice. Uh, and... Yeah, I actually got it within five days of purchasing. I bought it on the 15th and got here on the 20th. So that was incredibly surprising. And I got it on a whim, and I got it honestly mostly to make this video. I wouldn't justify spending that much. Even on a sword this big, that naturally is more than $100 if you get it elsewhere online. So, and I knew, I knew going into it, you all should know with this, it had two warning signs. One, it was Bud K, which is horrible in terms of historical or quality swords. And two, it came from Wish, but because I got it at such a discount, I thought I'd do it. I thought I'd make this video for you. And honestly, I, I don't regret it. I don't regret it. Um, as I'm learning more about Japanese swordsmanship as part of this whole Asian swordsmanship world that I'm going into, it's fun to see low quality stuff rather than focusing on the high quality stuff. So let me show you a bit of details about this uh, sword. First of all, I don't recommend it. <laughs> I, I really don't. I, you really shouldn't. But being the poor historian, being a guy who has had zero dollars in the past but still addicted to swords, I can totally justify this if I had a sword interest and no money. Uh, but let me let me show you some of the details. I'll get a little closer. Uh, <laughs> so first of all, you can. I'll actually upload my unboxing video. I did an unboxing video, so check that out if you want to see my initial reaction to it. Um, but overall, this is, first of all, the scabbard uh, is plastic. And by the way, I'm going to be using uh, English terms for two reasons. One, I'm not fully comfortable with using the proper terms yet. Uh, but two, I don't think this qualifies as as quality enough to justify using the traditional terms for it. But take a look. It's it's uh, The scabbard is is... I assume supposed to represent lacquered wood, but it is definitely plastic. And these, this pleather uh, cordage, which probably wouldn't have been leather anyway, historically, it would have been silk or cotton, uh, naturally dyed. This is just hilarious. But they, they at least wrapped it in a way that I assume is moderately appropriate, so good on that. They could have just as easily left it off. A couple of weird defects here. There's a bit of glue sticking out here and the tsuba or guard here is just laughable it's laughably bad <laughs> laughably bad i don't know it's just flat with a little bit drilled out now if you look at the picture from wish this and bud k this is not the tsuba that's included the tsuba that's included looks a lot better 
uh, than this. So I, I don't know. I, I wasn't buying it for the Suba. It wasn't a good quality Suba even in the picture. Um, but this guard is just hilarious. Just a flat disc with some circles drilled out of it. Uh, it also does have this decorative uh, ring here, the spacer, uh, which does have a Japanese term, but I am not familiar with it yet. It does have a little design on it, which is kind of cool. It's got a uh, this side that I'm looking at has a couple guys in a boat, and uh, this one appears to be a soldier of some variety. Uh, it doesn't really show up too well, and it's punched metal of some variety, thin, uh, so not brass or iron, or at least not of the quality you want. But there are a couple cool details. Uh, I already talked about the grip, the cordage on the scabbard. Same thing here. Um, but you can also see it does have the focus camera. It does have the Shagrin look on the inside. You guys can't see it. My camera is messing up too bad right now. But you can kind of see it does have that Shagrin look on that pleather underneath it. So that's fine. I mean, honestly, I'm not going to I'm not gonna dox them too much for the fake Shagrin. I don't think you can get modern chagrin anyway you could get leather with fake chagrin i don't know what this is about okay i don't this is not a kasirigama okay you don't have a little chain with a weight at the end of your odachi i'll have to look and see if there are any examples of this i don't know what the heck this is all about honestly but uh fun stuff um taking it the scabbard out it, it's a it's a the blade does not have the hamon on it which is the iconic japanese like wavy line where you can see the differentiation between the hard steel and the soft iron it doesn't have that it doesn't even have a fake that which honestly i'd prefer if, it, if it's not going to have a real hamon which i didn't expect this one to don't fake it you know just leave it which is fine by me it's probably stainless steel here's china and then whatever these numbers are bk1424 which is probably some sort of steel it came with a weird waxy coating. You can see a little bit of the remnants on it on the tip here. Uh, but I just wiped that off with, uh, like here, wiped that off with a paper towel. And it came off easy enough. And then it does have at least a bronze look, maybe a brass in actuality. I'm not really sure of this piece of metal here up on the Ricasso. Um, so neat stuff. I'm not going to cut with this. You shouldn't cut with this. This doesn't deserve to be cut with. It also is dangerous to be cut with. It's probably stainless steel, but it has the look. You got a costuming piece. You're going to hang it on the wall, or if you're going to do what I hope to do at some point, and I hope to do it before June if I have the opportunity, uh, there's a term called defarbing. Farb being a term to indicate a historically inaccurate replica. Defarbing would be to remove some of the inaccurate pieces with the goal of making a 100% accurate replica. That's obviously not going to happen with this guard, with this sword, unless I replace literally the entire thing, which I won't. But what I can do is at least try to make it look good. I can replace the tsuba, I can replace the cordage, I can figure out if this is anything. Uh, and I might do that in a future video if I really want to dissect this piece. Uh, but for now, I just think it's pretty cool. And for 52 total dollars, including shipping, I'm fine with it. So I'm, I'm actually very excited that this showed up. Uh, Wish, this is the first time Wish has not necessarily let me down, and that's probably because my expectations were set so low anyway. Um, I Also, I do want to give a note, you probably shouldn't even swing this guy around doing techniques or whatever. Uh, I have not gotten around to removing it to see if the Nakago or Tang is any anywhere deep at all, but nonetheless, it is probably stainless steel. It doesn't actually say it. And then, oh, I should also point out the Wish description had literally no wording on it. There were some higher cost ones on Wish of the same image that had better wording, but this one j literally just said Japanese Odachi Katana or sword. It didn't even say Katana. It was just like, okay, thanks for the information, Wish. Um, uh, but nonetheless, you should not even swing this around. Be at best, a wall hanger. I'm going to probably, like I said, I want to dissect it at some point, uh, replace it with some more appropriate cordage, and maybe see what I can do about the rest of it and replace the Suba. Uh, but that'll be at a later date. For now, just enjoy this other review video of a Wish sword. Take it for what it is as a Wish a Bud K sword through Wish, and just enjoy the fact. And you know what? Honestly, if you guys are out there and you, you've got that hankering for a, a sword and you have no money, 
I've been there, my guys, and this would have made me a very happy guy had I actually had an interest in Japanese swords back when I had no income. But for now, uh, I'm actually pretty happy with this purchase, just with my low expectations of it. Not to encourage this as authentic in any way, but a fun purchase for, although I got it for $52, I'm fine with that. So, uh, <laughs> I hope you guys, by the way, stay tuned for some, probably some better quality. This is, I think, my first Asian sword at all related video. And I, I hate to kick that off with such a low quality beast. So expect some better ones. I actually have some artifacts over here I might make a video on for, for the Swordsmanship Museum and Academy. Some original Japanese uh, suniate, which are um, shin armor, which is pretty cool. I'm going to do a little bit of analysis on those guys. But uh, just stay tuned and don't expect this uh, low quality video review for anything aside from Wish or some other, some other retailer. So with that... You guys have a great rest of your day and enjoy this video for what it is.